Well, everyone, please take a seat. Uh, we'll get started here in just a second. Uh, we had a long meeting last night at uh, Phelps, and we're going to try to uh, move this meeting along a, along a little faster. We don't have some items on the agenda tonight that we had last night. And uh, just some rules before we get started. We're going to open it up after uh, I give a brief presentation and the commissioners have an opportunity to uh, speak. We want to just bring everybody up to speed on where we are in terms of the county's finances and where we are on the solid waste system. And as you know, we've been in office a little more than two weeks and we are bringing meetings out to the communities. I don't know if this has ever been done before. Some of you here who have, uh, who have been in government longer than, than I've been alive uh, would know the answer to that. But we're gonna be doing uh, fiscal court meetings from time to time <coughs> in different parts of the county because we want the people to understand, people who can't make it to a 10 a.m. meeting on a, on a uh, Tuesday morning or a uh, meeting at six o'clock at night. Uh, before we uh, get started, I would like to uh, ask Brother Raymond Stanley to come forward and say the invocation. Raymond, would you come forward? I see you sitting back there. You can go up to the podium. merciful and gracious Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for this day that you blessed us with thank you for the gift of God his son Jesus Christ Heavenly Father we ask you to bless this meeting all that participate it all be done to the praise the honor the glory of your name amen, amen. thank you sir <clears throat> Madam Clerk please call the roll Judge Jones. Present. Commissioner Robertson. Present. Commissioner Tackett. Here. Commissioner Booth. Here. We have a quorum and we are ready to proceed. The next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to ask Eugene Gibbs to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> That brings us to the next item on the agenda for tonight, and I'm sorry I don't have a, uh, a mic holder, uh, and I'll have to hold this throughout the night. Uh, the sound system is not optimal, but if at any time you can't hear me or one of the commissioners or, or one of the commissioners, department commissioners, uh, please let us know if you're in the back of the room or if one of the media companies is having trouble. Uh, we'll be happy to try to accommodate you. Last night we had a, a good crowd at Phelps to talk about an issue, and it's not a new issue uh, that, that we're here to talk about. It's the status of our solid waste system. And I read some excerpts from some articles that we went back and, and, and retrieved from the News Express over the last several years. And I'm not going to go through a lot of this, but it's fair to say that one quote, uh, this is a quote from former state senator and former uh, assistant county attorney, uh, former deputy judge executive John Doug Hayes, uh, and this was about six years ago. And for those of you who didn't hear it last night, I'll, I'll read it again. For those of you who heard it, uh, I apologize for, for being re repetitive. But I think this sums up the situation we're still in. Um, here's what was said. We have rooted the situation in solid waste, and we're still losing money each year, Hayes says. That's been, I'm sorry, that, that's been as high as averaging about 1.7 million 
and there's been many holes in the dike that Bobby's proceeded to plug, but we still have several to go. We're making progress. Now that was several years ago, at a time when the county was having to take 1.7 million out of its general fund and put it into solid waste just to make it operate. <coughs> solid waste, the, the current landfill has been in operation since 1993. The solid waste ordinance that we're operating under right now uh, was put in place on December 16, 1985. And the ordinance has never really been followed. The ordinance said two things. There's two major points in the ordinance that have never been done. The first thing is the ordinance said that solid waste should be operated in a self-sustaining manner, meaning it should pay for itself. That's never happened. Already this year, the general fund has put 1.1 million into solid waste. That's just to, if we had not done that, solid waste would have been 1.1 million short through the first two quarters of this fiscal year. Solid waste also was in, in the original ordinance, 4% of everything that it generated was supposed to be set aside for equipment. That was never done. So we all know that when you build a landfill, at some point that landfill will reach maximum capacity. And Summit Engineering has given us about eight, seven and a half to eight years on the current landfill. Uh, Larry Hensley, who's a landfill, he's a certified landfill operator manager, is here. He spoke at one of the court meetings. If anyone would like to hear from Larry, we'll be happy to bring him up. Uh, Larry, I think his, his uh, statement was five years. Uh, Commissioner Brian Booth, who happens to be the supervisor for the city of Pikeville's solid waste system in his, in his day job, uh, says he doesn't think more than five years. Uh, Solid Waste Department Commissioner Bobby Mullins thinks we're closer to four to five years. So we really don't have a good picture of how much longer we have on the landfill. So the court voted to hire a company called Geocentec. And Geocentec is a company that specializes in landfills. That's what they do. Uh, we've had some significant problems with our landfill. We had a situation earlier this year where the landfill operated for, or I guess it was last year, operated for three months without a permit because of, of, some, of some issues. There's been a lot of problems with leachate outbreaks. Leachate is the toxic fluid that comes out of the landfill. Uh, we're hauling somewhere between three and 400,000 gallons of leachate every month to the city of Pikeville sewage treatment plant. That's how it has to be processed because it is toxic. And until we get the water problems fixed at the landfill, it's gonna to continue to produce leachate. If we had to pay the city of Pikeville to process the leachate, it would be seven cents a gallon. Right now, we don't have to pay. I say we, the county doesn't have to pay for that. And we're very fortunate that we don't because if we did, it would be uh, upwards of $20,000 a month. My review of this, and it, this is not something that we just started two months ago. Uh, the members of this court started meeting in May trying to, going through open records requests. We started meeting with county workers who had concerns about the solid waste system. We started looking at newspaper articles. But what we know, and there's no debating this, is that the landfill is on phase five. It has limited space in phase five, and to go to phase six will cost between five and a half to six million dollars to design it, permit it, and construct it. There's no question about that. There are questions about whether we can even get a permit for it because the terrain around the landfill is so unstable. There have been multiple slides, most of you have read in the newspaper about slides that have come in on the landfill that damage the liner. We are getting a grant, uh, I believe it's FEMA that's given the money to help pay to repair the liner. But another problem you have is you, can't, you really don't want to put employees working under an unstable uh, uh, unstable uh, area around the landfill, that is a concern. The other thing is if we spend five and a half to six million dollars to build this landfill, to do phase six of the landfill rather, it only gets you another five to seven years somewhere in that neighborhood. To me, it doesn't make economic sense to spend that kind of money just to extend the life by a few years. The other thing that is not 
debatable. And I don't really care who comes forward that wants to argue this point, is the county does not have one penny in the bank to expand the landfill or build a new one. There's not a penny. And I have here, if anybody wants to look at it, the mid-year financial report that uh, Pike County Treasurer Frankie Stacy completed last week. After the bills were paid, payroll was made on December 27th, the county had $97,000, $98,000 in the bank. That's it. Between the road fund and general fund, there was a little bit of money in solid waste, but in essence, you had about $100,000 in the county's operating accounts. We have no money put back to address the landfill situation. And the choices are pretty simple. We either try to run the landfill to its maximum life because the county does have money that is escrowed by statute. And that money is, um, only can be used to close the landfill. It can't, not one penny can be spent to expand it, to address the environmental problems that we have right now or to build a new landfill. It's only used, can be used to close and cap the landfill. And that money has, has to be able to take care of the landfill for 30 years post closure. We also don't know if the money that's in that account will be sufficient to pay for the closure and the maintenance of the landfill for 30 years. And if it's not, that falls back to the taxpayers. There's no way around that. The other problem we have, and Commissioner Mullins detailed this last night, is we have aging equipment. Uh, our county does service that's a lot different than a lot of counties. Uh, a lot of counties use private contractors. This county uses a county employees. There's close to 70 county employees whose livelihood, uh, livelihoods depend on working for solid waste. And that's the people who do the collection, people who work at the landfill, people who work at the recycling center, people who work in the office doing administrative work, and also uh, employees at the county road maintenance garage that are paid by money transferred out of solid waste. So what we have to figure out is what we're gonna do with Pike County solid waste. We either, in my opinion, we either run out the landfill to its maximum useful life at that point, we would have to pay to transfer the garbage. The county is generating over 40,000 tons. There's 55,000 tons a year going in the landfill uh, total. Some of that's from the city of Pikeville. Some of it, a little bit's from Williamson, sometimes a little bit from Letcher County. Most of it's coming from the county, our county, over 40,000 tons of it. So if we shut down the landfill and we don't have one here that we control, that garbage is gonna to have to be hauled to Ashland, most likely, big run landfill. And the problem with that is when you start talking about hauling 40,000 tons of garbage to Ashland every year, uh, there's a cost for that. The county doesn't have the vehicles or employees that would likely have to be contracted out. The other issue is, it, it, you know, we don't have to pay to dump into our landfill. We have to pay to operate it. But to dump in someone else's landfill, you're gonna be looking at somewhere in the mid $30 range per, every, per, per ton <coughs> for every ton we, we dump into it. So that is an additional cost. We're also gonna to have to construct a transfer station because the garbage would have to be handled really twice. You'd have to collect it, dump it into the transfer station, re, re, compress it, and then put it into tractors and trailers. So it's not as simple as saying, let's close the landfill. And I, for one, I think I can speak for the members of the court, we don't want to shut down Pike County Solid Waste because right now it's operated on a not-for-profit basis. But if you put a private contractor in, they're going to be looking to make a profit. And at some point, you lose control of what that cost will be. You may have a contract in the early years to hold the cost down, but at some point in time when that contract's up, the people are going to end up paying more. And logic would dictate that we cannot haul garbage to Ashland as cheap as we can haul it to Johns Creek. That seems pretty common, you know, pretty much common sense. Uh, we also have equipment problems at the landfill. We have a, a equipment that's not safe. I've had uh, people who've worked for solid waste tell me that they're, you know, I had one, uh, one gentleman uh, from Elkhorn City, whose grandson works at solid waste, and says that. <laughs> 
the uh, heat and defrost didn't even work in the truck. And you know, it's easy to talk about making cuts and, and we have people, you know, we've had some cold weather this, this week. I came out one morning, it was about 10 degrees. Well, when I came out to go to work, there were already people on the backs of garbage trucks running garbage routes around this county. It's a very difficult job. The men and women who work in solid waste work very hard. And it's a thankless job, what they have to deal with, um, you know, climbing in and out of trucks. One, one, one gentleman from up at Long Fork at Virgie said he estimated he got in and out of the truck 500 times a day. These trucks uh, are worn out, many of them. The newest trucks that the county has, I think, are 2015 or 2016 Dodges. And they're the mini packers. And the reason that our county uses mini packers, and part of the difference is the service, is we go up every hollow in the county. There's not a holler we don't go up to the last house. And the reason that most big water uh, or utility companies, uh, solid waste disposal companies, they use the big garbage trucks because they're not having to go up narrow one lane haulers. Well, we have to use the mini packers. We have some of them that are near 300,000 miles and they're just simply worn out. There's not one penny that has been saved to replace any of that equipment. There's not one penny that is in the current budget to provide any money for new equipment. Now, I wanna to talk to you just briefly about the uh, uh, current state of Pike County's budget. We yesterday received an update on the uh, coal severance tax receipts. And some of you may have seen my statement. The, the current budget that we have in place was a budget that was done in about a day by the former county treasurer. There was no thought put into it. There was no effort to try to refine the numbers and, and verify whether the revenue that was projected in the budget's real. Because you know, I can do a budget for my, my business and estimate that I'm gonna generate $100 million a year. Well, that, that's a budget. But if the revenue doesn't come in and I spent like I'm gonna have 100 million, I've got a problem. Well, what's happened here is the revenue in this budget has been overestimated. There's no question about that because the former treasurer did not follow Department of Local Government recommendations on how to budget coal and mineral severance. So in the current budget, it, there was a budgeted amount of 1.738 million for uh, coal severance tax. And an additional 1.259 million for mineral severance for a total coal and mineral severance of two million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand twenty-five dollars. In the first quarter of the of the year, the quarter which ended on July 18, or I'm sorry, July of 18, the county had estimated that the county would receive three hundred fifty-nine thousand dollars. It received one hundred forty-one thousand. In the second quarter, which ended in October of 18, the county estimated uh, receipts of 333,000. The county received 196,000. The current quarter, which ended in January of this year, I'm sorry. This is what was budgeted. This is what we got. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm giving. I'm, I'm speaking incorrectly. Let me back up. What was budgeted was 501,000 in the first quarter. We received 359. That's a difference of 141,000. Second quarter, we budgeted 530. We received 333 for a difference of 196,000. Third quarter, we budgeted 382 and received 327 for a difference of 54,000. So, excuse me, so far this year, Coal severance is $393,000 below what was budgeted. We suspect that in the fourth quarter, it will be the same. It would help if I put my glasses on. In regard to mineral severance, the mineral uh, severance was actually up $4,000 in the first quarter above what was budgeted, but was down $32,000 in the second quarter in the numbers we just received, it was down 101,000 in the third quarter. So the total right now 
is we're looking at $523,000 short of what was budgeted with one quarter to go. So we're probably looking at somewhere between six hundred dollars and $700,000 short. So if we use the same numbers starting with the next budget, we've got to cut roughly six to 700000 because the next budget will take effect on July 1. We also were notified that the county contribution to the county employee retirement system is going up about 220000 so you can add that onto the 650 or 700,000. The county also didn't take the compensating rate, which was about 170,000 and change. Now, some people uh, were at the meeting after the meeting last night implied that this court would indicate it would take the compensating rate. The compensating rate is the rate calculated by the state based on the property value and it includes unmined mineral tax. Um, that would give you the same revenue as the year before. This court will do everything it can not to raise property taxes. We all, those of us who own businesses, those of us who own property here, we've seen what happens with the property tax going up. We're gonna do everything we can to prevent that. We can't make any, recommend, any promises at this point. We've been in office two weeks. But we wanna bring this message out to people so that they can come out and they can discuss these issues. They can be, you know, people need to understand what's taking place in county government. And I think it's not been transparent in years past. Um, before I turn it over to the commissioners, when we open it up for public comment, I'm gonna start with the three minute time limit. We had a couple of people last night that went quite a, you know, it was a long night. And there's a lot of people here. We wanna make sure everyone has an opportunity to speak. <coughs> So we'll start out with three minutes. I would ask everyone to please keep your comments respectful, uh, whether you have an opinion one way or the other. Uh, we, we're not here to insult each other. We wanna make sure that the court is ran with the decorum and respect that the people of this county deserve. So with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to, we'll start with District 1 Commissioner Ronnie Robertson. That's the TV get some hindsight from you all try to figure this problem out we've got we do have a big problem like the judge said uh, we've got a lot of old equipment uh, it's hard to keep running about 200 some thousand miles on most all of them but uh, we just need your all's help work together we'll try to get through this thank you I just want to thank you all for coming out, give us some input. We can jot stuff down. Uh, I've been putting some numbers down here. I've looked at uh, 55,000 ton a year is $3.4 million. If that's not even paying drivers, burning diesel fuel, uh, that's just having, just getting it to a uh, big run if you go with a private, uh, with a private group. Uh, you know, that's, that's one thing about being out here is to kind of listen and see what you all think to help us with our decisions. But thank you all for, for showing up tonight. Yeah, it looks like we got a good crowd tonight. So I wanna thank all y'all for being here. Uh, we just wanna figure out a way that we can keep the rates as low as we can. Uh, we don't wanna have it no more higher than what we have to, but we still wanna provide good service to everybody in the community. So just, uh, we just wanna be here for anybody that's got any ideas that might can help us. Thank you. Well, 
We'll turn it over to Bob uh, Collins, who's okay. Commissioner of Solid Waste, and him say a few words. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, whenever this administration came in and the judge came to me and he seen the shortfall that we have and the problems that we have in solid waste. <clears throat> and he asked me what did I need to do in order to operate on a balanced budget. <clears throat> when I first took over this job a little over six years ago, I told the court then that we needed to be at a $20 rate just in order to break even. And so we failed to be able to get that approved to a $20 rate, and so we've been operating at a deficit ever since. We have problems at the landfill, as the judge says, <clears throat> that's costed all kinds of money already, like our mud slides, and we got gas wells that's got to be drilled to deal with this water issue that he talked to you about. And uh, we're looking at three gas wells that also serves as water wells to uh, get the water out of the landfill uh, to keep from all the leachate jumping out. We're looking at around $200,000 just to drill those three wells. We need about 12 wells to finish the project altogether at the landfill. But when the judge asked what did I <coughs> need, I said, well, there is no money to operate uh, or to uh, expand the landfill to phase six, and every estimate we had was five and a half to six million dollars. So if we have no money for that, and if we, if we decide, or if this court decides to do phase six, or if they decide to try to construct a new landfill, it takes two or three years to get your permitting done. So if we're if we are about out of room and got four or five years left, then we're going to start right away uh, planning on, on this. But where's the money coming from? That's the question. The gas wells has got those three has to be real sometime this early spring. Right now, they need to be done according to Division of Waste Management. So. In order to expand the landfill, you're looking at uh, five and a half to six million dollars. Well, over a five year period to replace some of our equipment, and I just called and got some quotes on that, what it would cost, and uh, that was going to total up to four million dollars. That does not include rear load dumpsters, roll off dumpsters, and uh, another water truck that we need desperately because we're having to uh, use our water truck plus contract out hauling the leachate. Now, a little bit about our trucks. Uh, we have purchased uh, six Dodge Mini Packers, and, and I was glad to see my good friend Jeff Justice that used to run the maintenance garage back there then, that he's here. and uh, uh, But those Dodge Mini Packers is not held up, and they're new. Got 40,000 mile on them. We're going to have to do something with all six of those. That throws us back to using trucks that we've got 509 models that's got 182,000 mile on them. We've got 203s, it's got 237,000 up to 300,000. We've got 406s, it's got over 218,000 mile on. Our whole fleet of mini packers needs to be replaced. Now when you're talking about replacing those, I got a quote on a, a mini packer the other day, new, uh, and that was one of the cheapest one or cheaper ones that I could find, and it was $108,000 for one of them little trucks that comes up your holler and goes up the driveways. If you see a big truck on the road, we're a little, little better shape on our big trucks than the Max. If you see one of them and wonder what it costs, well, it's over $200,000 for one of those Mack trucks. I looked at a 27-yard, and they gave me a quote on it of a... Uh, hundred and eighty thousand dollars so those all of this equipment is so expensive 
and we had purchased a uh, compactor, the landfill was over a half a million dollars. It was almost 600,000 if it wasn't. I don't remember the exact number. With the, with the, with the maintenance plan, it was $636,000. <clears> okay, that's the compact, the garbage lid. <clears throat> well, I got to looking at what I have to do to raise $11 million, you know, in order just to expand the landfill or open a new one and uh, maybe re and replace this equipment. And the only way that solid waste has got to to take any any money is what's on on the uh, the garbage bills and commercial and and uh, residential rates. And the judge wouldn't know what it would take for me to get to to eleven million dollars. See this. Now this figure I'm coming with is doesn't include the gas wells at all. It just includes landfill expansion and equipment. Is all and that's trucks. That's not dumpsters, roll off dumpsters. That's not no gas wells. That's not no upgrade in your compressor system. The compressor system is a is like a pump that brings you methane gas out of the landfill. It's placed into your uh, flaring system, and if you ever go up by there, you see a big flare uh, burning. <clears throat> this is a question that, that, or a subject that a lot of people has questions about. It hasn't been addressed in none of our meetings. And they say, well, why don't we uh, take this gas, and why can't we sell that or do something with it? Well, we was running around 300 cubic feet per minute, but it's methane. And we've had every test in the world done that the process of cleaning that up where it be usable or, or markable, we would have enough to heat the scale house with or the landfill. So it's not feasible <coughs> for us to try to clean up the gas. So in case you have a question about that. so. What I done, I just made proposal on what we would have to raise the rates to in order to get to ten million two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. We say, well, what are you going to do about the other million? Well, we're already down a million. You got to remember that. Uh, we was in hopes that maybe we can get the people. Uh, uh, we can do a better job in collection, and the judge will probably explain to me about people he's hired to to help collect, and and that's just like you keep your fingers crossed. But as of right, and, and let me say this before I start on these rate proposals. <coughs> I know there's a lot of poor people in Pike County that that's barely making a uh, buying their medicine, trying to pay their electric bill. And I sympathize with those people because I know what it is to be poor. And some of the people in this room, uh, John Young and, and, uh, and Mr. Robinette and them back here, they know the way I was raised. I was raised in a family of 14 children. Daddy never had a job making over $24 a day in his life. And he raised all 14 of us and we never went hungry. We found a way to survive and to make it. When I got married, I had to go and sign up on food stamps. When I got laid off, I had two children. I borrowed a truck to get to the food stamp office. I didn't have money to buy my kids anything to eat with. I managed to buy them one order of french fries and let them share. And I bought them one can of pop and me and my wife done without till we got back home. So you can't tell me nothing about being poor. I know all about it. But there, I've learned this in growing up. We're survivors. And it helped me being poor. It taught me how to survive and how to work. And sometimes you have elderly people that can't buy their medicine. I'd encourage you to do this just like I did with my mother. I made a way that I paid my mother's bills as long as she lived. And then I helped her with her medicine. 
All she had to buy was just her groceries out of her little chick that she had. So we're going to have to watch after one another, and I encourage you to do that. So with all that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this, and, and this is just a proposal only to get us the $10 million that we so desperately will need. This court will either have to approve or reject this or find other revenue in some way or another. But the only way that we can raise this kind of money is like this right here. Our regular rate customers, we have 17,277 people that's on a regular rate of $17.50 a month. I propose to raise that to $25. That will raise $1,554,930 in a year. We have low rate customers of 2,442 on a $14 rate. This is people that makes $1,000 or less. I propose to raise theirs to $19, but now we discussed this today. We may have another plan on that later, but as $146,520 a year that it, that it would raise, <clears throat> or it's, uh, it's about a month. I'm, I'm, no, it, it, it's a year. Okay, then uh, we have 542 uh, landlords that's listed at 13.50 a month and would raise them to $23. That would raise $61,788. Total residential customers, 20,261. And the average rate right now is 16.97. It would go to 24.22. It would raise $1,763,238. Okay, our commercial rates would have to go up also, and our 651 total co commercial customers were raised $377,605.20. So out of the number of customers, uh, and uh, that's uh, landlords and everybody, 20912 it would raise $2,140,843.20 a year. Over a five-year period, it would bring $10,276,047.36 over a five-year period. And that's the only way that, looking at it from inside of solid waste, that's the only way that we can get there. And it's left up to the court, and it's left up to the people. Do you want a landfill? Do you want to continue the solid waste services that you're getting, that you're getting? And I know a lot of people, they try to compare us to other surrounding counties around us. A lot of those counties, they have bag limits. We have no bag limit. Anything you throw at us, we'll take it, including the kitchen sink. We, we haul it just about all over the way if it's considered any kind of household trash. Other counties don't run a landfill. There's four <coughs> municipal landfills in the state of Kentucky that is county ran. And so the uh, rest of them is privately owned. So you may look at a county that says, well, you may say, well, they, theirs is just $16 a month. Let's take Floyd County they have a bag limit. Six bags is all that you can put out. If you look at Martin County, $15 a month, they have a bag limit. My son lives there, and it's five bags a week that they can put out. Any other trash that you have, you have to find something else to do with it. They take it and throw it over the hill most of the time. But anyway, that's my proposal that I would make, and if you've got any questions, judge if you want it. Well, first of all, let me reiterate what the commissioner said. That is a proposal. There has nothing been decided on this because that's why, because the Kentucky Open Meeting Law, we can't discuss this and make a decision 
in a private setting. It has to be done in the public, and that's why we're here. <coughs> now, let me just talk to you a little bit about where the, where the county has been and where we are now. When I became state senator in 2001, the county's budget was about $59 million. The revenue that this budget that we're under right now, at the end of the day, it will come in around $34 million. And then we're going to have to cut at least another million in the next budget. So when you go from th from fifty nine million dollars in less than twenty years down to thirty three or thirty four million, that's a catastrophic loss of revenue. In two thousand twelve, the Pike County Fiscal Court and Cole Severance received over nine million dollars. This year, we're on pace to be around. Um, <coughs> probably about 1.3 million. So when you start looking to go from 9 million to 1.3, 1.4 million, in that period of time, and if you think about it, the county's made cuts, but it's not made the kind of cuts to absorb uh, those kind of law losses in revenue. <clears throat> now, it was easy to absorb the uh, operating deficit and solid waste when you had that kind of severance tax coming in. You know, 1.7 million as a subsidy for uh, solid waste at the time that the rate was $10, you know, let's just face it, people benefited from a cheap rate for years, $10 a month to have your garbage hauled off four times for somebody to come to your house and haul it off was pretty cheap. But it was subsidized by coal severance tax and and uh, unmined mineral tax and other tax revenues that are no longer there. And the problem is that helped politicians to get repeat reelected repeatedly, but it also caused some significant fiscal irresponsibility. There's no money put aside for anything to do with solid waste. Now we can't wait to do something with solid waste until the landfill is completely full. And I equated this, you know, I've got three kids. I sort of, it's like, wait until your, 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 your child is a senior in high school to start saving for college, it's not going to be a good result. And we recognize there are a lot of people on fixed income. Uh, what we talked about today was either raising uh, the low income rate a dollar or two or just leaving it alone because we do know that people who qualify for that rate have little to no disposable income. But what we have to decide as a community, what's important? Now, you know, we've heard a lot of people complain about garbage bills. I don't see anybody uh, complaining a lot when their direct TV bill goes up, when their cell phone bills go up. I mean, we all know, most of us have these things, right? But what's the most important thing that we have? We have to take care of our community, and that includes solid waste disposal. The garbage has to be taken somewhere. And what Bobby talked about, Floyd County, we've looked at all these surrounding counties. And this week, the uh, Perry County Judge Executive, Scott Alexander, called me, wanted to know if Pike County could partner with Perry County on a landfill, because they're not happy with the service they're getting uh, from the same company that does Floyd Counties. But here's what you have to understand about Floyd County. How many of you live in a holler? Most of you, a lot of you? Well, guess what? In Floyd County, they only go to the school bus terminal. They use the big trucks, they don't use mini packers. So if they can't get one of the big garbage trucks to you, they don't come to your house. Here, no matter where you live, the garbage truck comes. It's more expensive to run these routes. One of the things that I had a pastor message me today, and it's something I had sort of thought about, is, and this is very early uh, in the discussion phase, and it's so early that the commissioners will hear it for the first time in just a minute. We are just looking at the feasibility of, instead of picking up weekly, going to three pickups a month. You know, that would mean instead of having garbage pickup every seven days, it would be roughly every 10 days. Well, that doesn't help us on the landfill side because the same amount of material is going in. But what it would do is it would reduce the amount of equipment that we would have to have to run the routes. And it would help eliminate that much fuel cost we would need less employees to do it because right now some of our <coughs> solid waste crews are, are understaffed. So those are some of the issues that we're looking at. And we wanted to open this up for feedback. So 
With that being said, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, public comment will start out in three minutes. Please try to keep your uh, remarks on point and uh, we'll open the mic up to whoever likes to speak. Start, like, would you start out and just give us your name because we have to keep minutes for these meetings. So we my name is Mark Backer. Uh, I like to say there's quite a few people that come up there at Turkey Creek Transfer Station that dump quite a bit. And uh, I do appreciate the business up there and stuff like that there. But this here is also one of our services that is rendered through this county. And uh, I'd like for them to know that the solid waste is what keeps this here going. I'm not a speaker and I ain't very good at it. But I would like to put my two cents in on that there. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Sir, what does it to, to dump up there? Does that cost anything? For uh, non-residential areas, like if you're from West Virginia, it's $20 to pick up load and stuff like that there. But for earlier customers and stuff like that there, no, it doesn't cost them nothing. All right, who's next? My name's Roy Rowland. I live at Stone, Kentucky, and I don't, Bobby, I don't see how you operate what you're doing right now. Uh, I have no problem with uh, raising the garbage, but not a lot of people can afford it. Uh, you're gonna have to generate money, and if you're gonna want 10, 11 million dollars, short 25 dollars is enough. Let, let me, Roy, let me address that. And uh, we've got the GeoCentech report. That's that they're they're going to be here January 31st. Uh, after the last regular court meeting, we had a citation that we received in the mail because of this leachate problem. It's a huge, mm -hmm. huge liability because you've got a school down below the landfill. You've got Johns Creek. I mean, there's, you know, they're really, really strict about this leachate because of, it is toxic. I mean, you know, everything that's in the garbage, this water has touched it. We don't know what it is, what's in it. So we don't know, and, and that's why we're throwing this out there. And what the commissioner said was the rates that he's proposed, as painful as that is, still doesn't raise the amount of money over the five year period that you need for equipment in the landfill. Now, we can talk about the landfill. I had someone asked last night, well, have you looked for a piece of property? Have you identified a piece of property? Well, I said, you know, it's like a, someone going down to the, to the card lot and looking at a new F-150 when they've got $100 in the bank. That's all you can look, do is look. We have no money in the bank to even acquire a piece of property. We have no money in the bank to try to plan for a landfill. And uh, so this rate, when it's set, could be higher than twenty-five dollars, and that's why we're bringing this message. We're not going. We're not going to make a knee-jerk reaction, but every day that goes by is one day less that we have to well, escrow in that, money. In that process, you know, hey, I want to say something. I'm not politically tied to nobody. I don't know none of these people. I'm just going by a business aspect of it. If you're going to run this, run to make a profit. So when something goes down, you'll have the money to fix it. I know there's a lot of people can't afford that. I don't want to pay it near, but we're going to have to, you know. And that's my version on it, because equipment wears out, fuel cost goes up, insurance goes up, wear and tear on tires go up, you got to pay the drivers, matching compensation, federal FDIC and all that, you know, you got to pay all that. And we've been riding the train for how many years now? Well, there's, you know, the rate increases, it was kept at $10 for yeah. years and years and years for political reasons. Mm -hmm. And at $10, they had no money set aside to do anything. I want to go back just briefly to this GeoCentec report. If any of the commissioners had one to jump in here, we're we're not going to, to discuss a permanent rate until we know when GeoCentec tells us how much longer we have on the landfill. That will tell us the longer we have, the lower the rate could be to allow us to accumulate money. If they come in and say you've got ten years, then we've got more time to deal with that. But we still have to start putting money back now. If they come in and say you've got four years, then we got a real problem. 
I mean, a real problem because that would mean that the rate would even have to be higher because my personal belief is it's not going to be feasible for Pike County to build a landfill on its own. Uh, Geocentech gave us a cost the other night, and this would include the first two year sale of $10 million to construct it. And this is just a rough, off the cuff number, plus property. They built one in a small, I think it was in Pennsylvania, and they said it was $15 million. Well, when you have no money in the bank, $15 million is a lot of money. And so even if you factor out the property, they say cost of construction is $10 million. So for us to do that, it would make sense to partner with the city of Pikeville, potentially Floyd County, even, I mean, we, would, we, could, we could enter into a partnership with several counties or to, to, to split the cost. So, but right now, we have no ability to enter into a partnership because we have no money to put toward a project. That's, you know, that's good. The reason why I'm up here is not really about this garbage thing, but it has to do with garbage, okay? Uh, like the radius, I have no problem. I live up here at Stone, right there at Mouth 199. They just keep dumping trash, dumping trash. You know, me and my father-in-law, he's 84. We went down there several times and picked it up. Then the jailers, thank God, they come over and pick it up, you know? And and this another thing, too, it's gonna make some people in here mad. I can't help it. This is how I feel about it. I live in a ghetto, okay? That's how I feel about it. They look up the word ghetto and see what it says. We got more junk cars sitting in people's yard once you make them pay taxes on that, once the court decides to sit down and say, look, I run my vehicles, I gotta pay my taxes on it, all right? These vehicles is not running on people's property, make them pay taxes on it. If they're gonna run it, make it legal. If it's not gonna run, make them pay taxes on it. Let me just touch on two things. Okay. I'm glad you brought up the idea. When we came in, we there was no one working in the, in the occupational <coughs> tax office. We had Don Ed Rutherford working there. She was the only person working in there. It was all she could do to take care of just the day-to-day -day paperwork. We've got two people that are working in there every day. Two, Donnell was at over 60 businesses in the last two, three days that they've identified. Over 60 businesses that are not registered for occupational tax. They're not paying their fair share. We had no one on the ground, we had no boots on the ground to go out and work on collecting garbage bills. We put someone doing that. I mean, when they made some of these cuts, they cut the revenue stream. You know, it's sort of like if you run a business and you have to make cuts, cutting the area where you generate your revenue, it doesn't make sense. That's what the county has done. And you have people who can pay occupational tax and garbage bills and aren't. We have one coal company with a $25,000 bill. We have one guy who's a landlord that had a $6,500 bill that the last administration wrote off because he came in and asked and they went over Bobby's head, over Commissioner Mullen's head. I mean, $6,500 bill. Well, it's not fair for everybody here who pays their garbage bills to have somebody use political connections to get out of it. Those days are over. Everybody's gonna be required to pay. But going back to the garbage issue, think about this. There's nobody, until I came in, till this court made a decision we talked early on, we want to clean this county up because you know when I live up in the head of Left Fork Island Creek, you ought to see the garbage. It's appalling. And we're trying to clean it up. So we moved the gentleman who's already on the county payroll, who's a 15-year veteran of the Pico Police Department into solid waste enforcement. He started there Tuesday. So now, if you're dumping illegally, I had a lady Facebook me, we sent him, sent him out there. If you're dumping illegally, He's gonna go through your garbage, he's gonna find proof, and you're gonna get charged criminally. We're gonna clean the county up, and we appreciate what the jailer's doing. Brian's doing a great job, he's helping us, and it's another subject for another night, but we appreciate the work that the jailer's doing helping us clean the county up too. So. Yeah, it, it is a mess, you know. I've been riding around the county, looking around a little bit on my spare time. It's a mess, you know. If you want tourism in this county, we're gonna to have to clean it up. And the gentleman from Turkey Creek, he does a good job down there because I've done it quite a few times down there. Appreciate you, bud. You know, so that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on up, sir. Hello. Brian Peake, uh, just one comment I got to make to start with. Uh, we're on Monday pickup, which all your holidays primarily fall on Monday, which they make up. 
when they can, which like today they done a make a run on our trash, which is good. <clears throat> but we we got a bad on the Monday deal. Uh, but another thing is talking about running up the hollows. Uh, you can put a dumpster, but along with that, I realize you're going to get whatever they put in. But I understand that, but uh, as opposed to run up narrow hollows, you got dumpsters, because I wouldn't have a problem with taking mine and putting it in a designated dumpster. Um, and uh, the only other thing I got to say is uh, take in consideration of these people that don't really have the retirement money or whatever to pay the bills like some of us do. Uh, I know a bunch of widow women lives up a holler that don't have a lot of money. And uh, what with people leaving this area because of the cold down, we've got more people gone and more people's picking up the burden over that. Back, like the power company, they make us pick up the burden of the people that are gone due to the cold being down. And that's about it. Mr. Pete, any, any commissioners have anything? Let me just touch on that. I, I get Monday pickup too. I, I'm with you. And <coughs> one of the issues that I brought and we've discussed it, and that's one of the reasons that they're doing the makeup. We're trying, so if you're if you're falling, if your service falls on a holiday, we're gonna to try to address that. If we look at this issue about if it comes to we go to three times a week, if that's something that's feasible and it saves money, and we still think it will effectively pick up the, the, the solid waste, um, we may be able to do it to where Monday pickup is not a problem. But uh, if you have any problems with the trash not being picked up, let us know. The dumpsters, we've got an issue with the county has almost no dumpsters. And if you drive over to Ford Mountain and look at them, most of them are rusted out. Um, I see some people shaking their heads here. If you go look at the dumpsters, most of them aren't fit to even take out somewhere. Uh, they're rusted out, they're worn out, and again, there's no money in this budget. So, they in the past, they did take dumpsters out. Is that right, Bob? Yes. But there was problems with that, too. So, uh, you know, we've even had trouble with these recycling dumpsters. I know the city of Colburn had trouble with their recycling dumpster. When they put it out, people didn't put recycling in it. They just put garbage in it. So, you know. That's another thing. I tried to take the recycling stuff. For whatever help it is, I know it has gone down from what it was in the past, getting anything out of recyclables. Uh, but I've got a big hopper to try to account for the layovers, and I don't really have that many bags that goes out there on the, the bag issue and all that. That's about it. We appreciate your concern, and we are going to be sure that we take into uh, uh, we're going to take into account the low income folks who would be affected by any rate increase. And I thank you for what you're doing with the getting out on this. We we appreciate your comments. Thank you. Right. Who's next? Anyone else? My name is Matt Reynolds. Um, are we paying overtime rate for these employees? Is it like, you know, a scheduled 40 or are we paying extra? Workers are they're only, they're only supposed to work 40 hours. Right. They're not supposed to work any overtime unless it's absolutely necessary. Okay, that's, that was the And the commissioner could address that on the, on the 40 hours. It's, that's, that's it's 40 right. hours. It's, okay, that's what I was wondering if people, you know, we were paying, you know, for something we really didn't need, if we could keep it down. But another thing is like on, uh, I, I'm all for the three day thing. I've worked for companies that they've done that, it saved money, every, as long as everybody gets their time. As long as it don't cut people, you know, cause people to be laid off, you know, because I think if you lay people off to save a day, it's gonna do just, it's gonna do damage too. So is that something? We're hoping to avoid layoffs right. because. Have we done any layoffs already? The only layoffs were part-time layoffs. There was no no permanent. If you have, if you look at the county administrative code, there's a copy in the judge's office. Anybody can get a copy. Right. Permanent employees 
are the classification that have job rights. Seasonal workers, part-time workers, don't have any rights under the administrative code. The problem with part-time workers is you still have to provide uh, retirement contributions. So that's why you're better off not using part-time workers because they can move on to other jobs right. and you're still paying, but it increases your contribution to CERS. And like this year, we're looking at another 220,000. So in the next budget, we're gonna have to cut a million dollars. Can I sit here and say that that won't mean layoffs? No, because at one time, the Pike County Fiscal Court had to roughly 200 and, was it 290 employees, Frankie? 290 employees, you're down to 180. And that's because the revenue's going down. So I can't sit here and make a promise to you or anybody else that there's not gonna be layoffs. But I do think that should be considered. I mean, I know what you're saying, but you know, you gotta look at it. If we cut down three days, you know, what's these people gonna do those days? There's, well, first of all, you're already short staffed on some of your routes. So, but there's ways they, places they can go. Right <laughs> now, and with your personnel director shaking his head, you've got right now, you've already got sh a, a shortfall uh, drivers. of drivers. Right. So what this would do is it would reduce your fuel bill. Right. I, I, you I, won't I, have to hire anybody else. Right. And here's my reason for not wanting to shut down solid waste. There's about 70 people whose livelihoods will be lost and we can't afford to lose any more jobs. <laughs> That means 70 people who lose their health insurance. That means 70 people who aren't gonna be able to pay their rent. That means all the money that, that we're spending on fuel, parts, tires, all that money that stays in the air economy, all these county workers pay occupational tax. So what I don't wanna see is it outsourced, and it, it, there's a lot of easy solutions. People can throw out all kinds of ideas, but you've got a decision to make here, people do. Right. You either fund it, or you close it and outsource it. I don't support outsourcing it and closing it because it costs jobs, it costs revenue, and if you put a for-profit company in, if there's no for-profit companies in Pikeville that would do this. It's gonna to go to waste management, waste connections, rump here, somebody like that, and that money's gonna get sucked out of here. You know, you're gonna have some local people, but they're not gonna be most likely getting benefits, they're not gonna have a retirement plan, and we don't need to lose, and these, some of these jobs are not high paying jobs, but they do have benefits. And you know, my wife's in healthcare. A lot of her patients have lost their health insurance. So we don't need to see that happen. You know, do the commissioners have any comments about it? So, well, like I said, I just want to say that I'm all for the three day. I think that works. I've worked for companies and it worked out great as long as everybody, you know, like I said, I understand, but I think if we can prevent layoffs because you know, that will hurt that family much. They're gonna pay the same garbage bill, but then they're on layoff, you know what I mean? So their income has went down too, so. We're, we're gonna do know. everything we can to avoid the layoff of permanent employees, but we have eliminated part-time and seasonal. Right. Why? Because it's either that or layoff permanent employees. Now, when this next budget reduction hits, it's over, it's, it's a minimum. Frankie, what would, let's, let me ask the treasurer, what would you say the minimum we're looking at cutting? Roughly about 1.2 million. So you're talking cutting another 1.2 million. I mean, there's there's only a few places to cut. And if you look at the county workforce, there's roughly 180 workers, 46 or so are in the jail. We have no ability to make cuts there. We could roll the 5% pay raise back, but you can't make cuts because minimum staffing, safety issues, security issues, and liability for civil rights violations if someone's attacked or injured. So that leaves us the 36 people who work well. We've got about, what, 34 on the roads, 33 on the road lots right now. So you got about 33 people. When you think about how big this county is, you only got 33 people taking care of somewhere more than 1,000 miles of roads, maybe as much as 1,200. Why I say I don't know, because the county's numbers, the Big Sandy Ads numbers, and the state's numbers differ. But there's things that we're trying to do. For instance, let me give you an example. The treasurer discovered that the prior administration, in their infinite wisdom, spent $720,000, $730,000 on asphalt. All they had to do, it's called state flex funds, all they had to do was send the paperwork to Frankfurt. 16, 17 fiscal year, 17, 18 fiscal year. Well, those fiscal years are closed out. So now I'm trying to see if we can get reimbursed the $730,000 
that our predecessors were too lazy to even send the paperwork in. And I'll say that. That $730,000 that we could have in the county's coffers, if they had just sent the paperwork in, and they didn't do that. So those are the kind of mistakes that we're trying to fix. But again, could there be layoffs? It depends on what we get into these numbers. And Frankie said 1.2 million, that's not factoring in any additional decrease in coal and mineral sales. So if the Department of Local Government tells us you can expect another two or 300,000 shortfall, that cut's gonna go, is that correct, Frankie? Or did you factor that in? No, even last year, uh, DLG recommended taking the lowest quarter of revenue that we had received for the year and taking 85% of that number and then multiply that for four quarters and use that as your budgeted number. And uh, uh, DLG. Okay. I'm going to sit down and just list. You uh, answer my question. Okay. DLG had recommended that. Uh, the county budget, uh, the lowest quarter actually received for the year for coal and mineral, and take 85% of that number and then times it by four and use that number for budgeted revenue for this coming year. And actually the treasurer used 100% of the actual revenue received for last year. So, and then that's why we're running about $150,000 a quarter short and estimated to be about 650 short for the year. If we used DOG's recommendation, we would probably, well, we would have probably had to cut about a million dollars off of the budgeted revenue number, but it would have been worked into the budget uh, already and not seeing it now. I just briefly wanted to say we have taken steps. We, you know, by eliminating the part-time uh, status, we're saving probably three hundred thousand dollars. We've parked all take-home vehicles. No county employee is driving a take-home vehicle. So, if you see somebody in take-home a uh, county vehicle on the weekend, it's because they're working. We're doing everything we can, Commissioner. Booth found a way that uh, in the next budget we're going to be able to save about $28,000 uh, by utilizing a, an existing county employee to do some work that's being contracted out. It's a catch that he made. So we're doing everything we can to try to save money. We're going to shop around the county's comp insurance. Uh, we're going to shop around the liability insurance. Uh, we're going to shop around the health insurance. So we're doing everything we can, but there's certain fixed costs that we, we can't control. And you know, fuel, you know, the county's power bill was uh, $65,000 this month. And we approved last night paying the bills for the county, uh, and that was $1.65 million. <coughs> That's just for one month bills. County payroll with benefits uh, will be about uh, $12,380,000 this year. It'll go up by another $220,000 next year. Uh, when you factor in. So you're looking at next year 12.6 million just for county payroll. Uh, so when you go back to what I was telling Mr. Reynolds, if you look at the number of county employees in the road lots, you look at solid waste, some of the departments, you know, uh, we only have one person working with the senior program, that's Commissioner Thacker. Uh, Jimmy Kaiser does a great job as a floodplain coordinator. There's very few places for us to cut unless it's on the benefit side or the personnel side. Uh, we're trying to save on the fuel cost. We're scrutinizing everything that can be scrutinized. We found some vendors that are selling products to the jail cheaper than they're selling to uh, the county. Why would that happen? So those are the things that we're doing. We've got a purchasing director that's going over every single bill. So we're doing our part to cut costs, and we just want you to know that. So anyone else like to come up? Mr. Gibbs. Hello, I'm Eugene Gibbs from Blackberry, and most of you guys know that I've been with the Senior Citizen Program for the past 20 years. And I've talked to some of the seniors in the county about this issue with the garbage. Now, what most of them is saying that they're on fixed income, which you guys know. 
and there's one behind me is on 15 count. But anyhow, what I'm saying is this. They're wanting to know what this administration, I know you guys have just been in a couple of weeks. They're wanting to know what this administration has got planned to collect this, I'm thinking, over a million dollars worth of back garbage bill. Now, what kind of legal aspects are you going to take to make these people pay the garbage? You know, Bobby, you and I talked about this one time. I, I'm fortunate I can pay my garbage bill the whole year. We used to get a month, and we lost that month for the simple fact that people are not paying their garbage bill. We need to have somebody do something in this court, pass laws or do something to make these people pay these garbage bill. You sat there and told us about you had a, a discount rate for people that can't afford and one's on lower income, then they need to take advantage of that because it's not fair for these people out here to scratch up and pay their garbage bill. And, and by the way, the, the $25 is not going to hurt me, but I've got people in the senior citizen program, it's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt them because they're on fixed income. And I know these people. And so does Diana out there. She knows these people. And my concern is, what are we going to do to make these people? That million bucks is a shortfall that you're talking about earlier could could really help. And I know you're not going to get it all, but we need a law. We need something in this county to make these people pay it. And I'll reserve my time to you, Judge. Thank you. Hey, hey Real, you may have a comment here. Thank you, Commissioner Roberts. Eugene, uh, I think this court up here, we've already I think we've already talked. Uh, we're going after these people that's not paying their bills. <coughs> you know, I pay it. Ernie pays his. You pay yours. It's not right, you know, for everybody else out here uh, that pays bills and these other people don't. We're going to go collect it one way or another. If they can make it, they can come in and pay their bills or they can do it the hard way. But if you ask them, that don't mean they're going to pay it. You don't have to have some kind of law. Eugene, I want to thank you for what you do with the senior program. This is a different, and this is a different. I mean, that's a different thing here. But last night at Phelps, I, I heard a guy said, "Well, my my dad or my grandpa said you can't get blood for a turnip from a turnip." Well, my grandpa said, "If you can't get blood, take the turnip." That's what we got to try to do to get the money where it's not a burden on all the senior citizens of Pike County. My name is Ernie Justice, and I could not miss the opportunity of not being on that side of the table. I've not, this is my first physical court meeting since 1989. So I didn't want to give my three minutes up. I'm going to give somebody down the road before I sit down. <laughs> uh, did I understand you to say that it would cost six million dollars to bring the current landfill into compliance? No. What did you say? Five to six million dollars for expansion to phase six to, to construct. But, uh, on another yeah. layer. Yeah. Well, they are places. Now that synthetic liner, I'm not for that. I'm 100% against it. it uh, it's the costiest deal that you can deal with. Because, and there are places in this county that you don't have to use a synthetic line. If it's got a certain, you can have the soil tested, if it's got a certain amount of clay in it, you don't have to use the line. And there are several places in this county that qualifies for that. Uh, I'm sure that a few of them would be for sale. And if you can do away with that, that's, that's big money uh, because that's costly. I was against the putting the landfill in at Forge Branch. I worked as commissioner uh, from 1985 to 1989. I was a certified operator and a certified manager. Now, how many employees, Ray, do you have in management on the solid waste? You got uh, Commissioner Mullins on that side, uh, uh, is over the whole department. You've got Larry is over uh, the landfill. He's a certified operator manager. 
and you've got Stephanie uh, Clevenger who is over the office collection, uh, the, the office administration. Right now you have two young ladies that are working as monitors, uh, both of whom are expectant mothers that are getting ready to be going off work. Uh, we just put a young man uh, in to help do collections. Uh, we've had no monitors out on the ground. So that's, and we have Chuck Morley who is a customer service manager and I think there's a receptionist. So you really don't have a lot of people when you look at the amount of bills, you know, to 20,000 20, plus customers and the problems we've had collection, they really not had the staff. I wanted to sort of, as part of that, address what Eugene said. We're gonna start putting liens. The ordinance allows liens to be put on real estate. The problem is, you know, doing what I do for a living, doing litigation, Mr. King and I talked about this, some of these smaller bills, it's not feasible to file a small claims action because the filing fees more than you're gonna get out of some of the bills. We're trying to identify the bigger bills that we can collect, you know, corporate bills. Like I said, there was one coal company, it's $25,000. You also have people on that list that we don't know if they've moved, we don't know if they're deceased. So there's a lot of things that we're trying to get to the bottom of that, but there's gonna be lawsuits filed and liens filed. So that'll be probably, I was gonna do it last night, we ran late, that's gonna be at one of the next meetings. Uh, but Ernie, we've got, that's, you know, the, the solid waste department is not overstaffed from what we looked at. And that's why we came in, we said they, they need help in terms of the collection and, and enforcement side. Well, there's one thing that uh, I, I definitely know. I know that uh, the county can operate and pick up the garbage and operate a landfill <coughs> cheaper than you can contract it out. That is what said before. When you contract it out, they're not going to break, but look at the idea of breaking even. They, they're going to double their, their price. So that, to me, that's just that. Uh, we've got to take care of our own garbage. And uh, when I was over there, which I know times changed, and it's been a lot of years, we had two people in the management in old garbage. And that was me and Homer Atkins. I was the manager, and he was my assistant. Uh, we would go on the, how many violations do you get, say, in, in a month's time? Well, we had no enforcement officer until the judge just put one in. So I'm talking about it when, it. Oh. when the state comes up and inspects. We had about eight or ten violations due to mudslides, bleach aid, things of that sort. I don't think the majority of the people would mind a paid board. I know that I, I wouldn't uh, to keep the landfill going, providing that the physical court does everything they can do before they raise the garbage bill. Uh, on the violations, uh, I a, was an equipment operator, and my assistant was, and some of them violations you can't correct uh, when you're uh, uh, dumping garbage. We would go on the weekends and take care of the violations. Uh, that was just part of her job, the way I looked at it. And we have five lots, and they wasn't a week went by while I wasn't at each one of them lots at least one day to see what was going on. Now, do you let your employees, if they get through early, go home? They all have to stay to quit now. And, and one benefit, Ernie, is we've got the GPSs on the trucks now. So we've been able to catch people not, you know, who are not doing their job. So uh, likely we're gonna expand those uh, GPSs to some other people in the road department to make sure they're doing their job. I mean, that way we can make sure they're not driving fast, they're not being unsafe, but that they're also working. We just caught, I don't wanna discuss a personnel matter, but we've, you would be surprised what you can discover with the GPS. Uh, at one time, I think that the prior court, is that right, Bob, that they did let them go home when they got the route done? Well, that's just, that just makes no sense. I mean, they're required, if they get done early, they need to wash their truck. If they get done early, they need to go help at the landfill picking trash up, right. clean up around the transfer station. There's a lot of work to do um, that wasn't getting done. And I think that's one of the areas where there was a, a short shortcoming in maintenance on the equipment. 
Well, I do know this, and not because you all are sitting there. I know Ray, and I know all the commissioners. And I believe that you'll do the best job you can. But uh, when you do all the, the things that you can do without raising the bill, and you still, and I'm sure you're going to have to raise it, I don't know how much, uh, I believe the people, the majority of them, will accept it because if you contract it out, you know what's going to happen. We're going to be paying double. Uh, Ernie, I just want to, in, 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 you know how people on social media are when they hear something, they make it the worst case scenario. The commissioner in the, was interviewed by the Herald Leader and he said that if it's contracted out, he could see it going to 50 or 60 a month. That's close to what the city of Pikeville estimated if the landfill shut down, they had to haul it to Ashland. I agree with you that we need to keep solid waste open and what we're sort of, the idea we're kicking around is a temporary surcharge for six or eight months because we don't want to set a permanent rate because it may not be, as I think it was Mr. Rowe mentioned, it may not be 25, it could be a little more than that. And if it comes back that it's more than that, then we're gonna really have to hold the, the line on the low income or raise the threshold on the low income so it really doesn't hit people who, elderly people. There's a lot of things we're looking at. This Geocentec company is hopefully gonna make sure we don't get anywhere near the violations that we've been getting. Uh, that's been a huge problem. For instance, the landfill was cited for not having a permit that apparently the, the, the engineering company that had been doing the work had sent the papers in. Uh, so we're trying to, we're gonna rely on the experts. They're, they gave us a great price. The first thing we need to know is what needs to be done about the environmental problems, the leachate, because it's breaking the county. I mean, it's just a massive amount of fluid coming out of it. Second, how much time do we have left? And then we want to get their report before we do anything about setting a permanent rate. So we're looking at a surcharge to help get some money in to address these immediate problems we have with equipment. And then later in the year, setting a permanent rate that we can lay out for people and explain how we came to it. Uh, Geocentech has consultants that, you know, they will actually come in, look at your rates, look at your routes, look at your expenditures. They bring people in with MBAs to help come up with the rate structure that will make it sustainable. We may go that route because that way, if you've got independent people, it's not Ray Jones or Brian Booth or Ronnie Robertson or Jason Tackett. These are experts, educated people who have experience in this that will be making that decision. That's something that we're going to take up before we, uh, before long. Well, one other thing, and I'll sit down. Now, I'm a little reluctant to see other counties bring their garbage into her county at the landfill for this reason. The state said we couldn't put another layer on top of the one that we had in Beaver, up in the head of Beaver Creek. I went to Mingo County. I went to Floyd County. They both had <coughs> dumps. They didn't refuse to take our garbage, but they may as well have refused it because they priced it so high, there was no way that we could pay it. So I had to go back to Frankfurt and I'd say, I, you've got one choice. I'm either going to dump it over the hill or you give us a permit to put another layer on top of one in Beaver. So they approved that and that took care of us so we got the new one in for our uh, the branch. Can, can I ask a question? Uh, why were you against the Ford's branch site? But my, my concern about that site was it just wasn't big enough and didn't give you enough life in terms of the landfill. Well, I walked over, I, over every bit of that. I say I made uh, five or six trips all the way around it at different places. And I knew when in, in uh, several years you was going to have a problem with the uh, overhead that was over top of the working people. I knew that. And I knew with, with the slope in that hollow that it's got, and you put that synthetic liner down, it's got no where else to go but come out somewhere. It can't go through that line. But now if you had the dirt, with the amount of clay in it that they require, which you can have. 90% of that would be absorbed by the dirt. It, it would be my recommendation, if they, we do decide to build a new landfill, that we need to let people like Geocentec 
who understand the issues help find the site rather than right that would help Ernie, thank you for the comments yeah. Yeah. and we're going to do everything i'm sure we can. that what you have to raise to survive the bill you got to do it thank you sir anyone else thank you uh if uh Um, my question is, is there a way to verify that every household is being billed for garbage? Well, that's why we brought, the last person we brought into administration is the way the city of Pikeville does it. And again, I'm going to go back to Commissioner Booth. They drive the route once a year to make sure that people took garbage out there getting the bill. We don't have anybody doing that. So we've got a gentleman who has started, that's already, he's, he was working today, I think on commercial accounts about some businesses, but he's gonna be driving the routes to see if you're putting the garbage out, if you're on the list to get a bill. Well, the reason I ask that, I, I mean, I'm retired and all that, but when I worked, we could leave work on Friday. They picked the trash up on the, the dumpster. They dumped it on Wednesday. We'd leave work on Friday, hardly anything in it. You come back on Monday, you couldn't even, we, we couldn't even put our own garbage in the dumpster because it's, it's, you know, that's why I just feel like there's a lot of people that's not really paying their part. I have the same problem with my law firm. Mm -hmm. We've got a dumpster out back. Of course, it's in Coal Run. It's not through the county. It's through the city of Coal Run. We go in there on a Monday, and there's people who have come in there and fill my dumpster up. So, I mean, and it's, you know, everything from, you know, beer bottles to food, pizza boxes. I mean, I don't know who it is, uh, but, you know, I'm paying well, you, for their garbage. And I don't know, I mean, are businesses built by weight or by the size of the dumpster? Uh, I don't know that, but. It's, it's the, there's a dumpster rental fee. It depends on how many times you dump it, too. It depends on how many times you okay, dump it. I mean, so. But like I say, I mean, it's that the business part doesn't really apply to me, but I just think that there's people using the businesses and they're not paying their part. We're, we're working on putting some cops on those. That way, as a business. Well, I think that's a good idea. You know, we we, we that's, have that's been looking idea. into that too. Okay. That, that way, the, the public has to, they're, they're not going to take the businesses, right. the dumpsters, and fill them up too. Yeah, right. Everybody has that problem. The city of Bikeville has that problem constantly right in the city limits. People come in, fill the dumpsters up, and bring the trash in. They even sometimes put them in the recycle. So, I mean, well, Brian, awesome. you li you live all the way to the end of the Bear Road, but yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you could see people that don't put garbage out. I mean, yeah, it's it's a constant problem. Yeah, but I mean, I just think that's something that should be looked into and have them pay their fair share. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Mike Rutherford, uh, I appreciate everything you're doing. I wouldn't have your job at all <laughs> because I know you're following up from decades of squander and waste. And the only two things I had to say, you've covered most of it. I've worked with a couple of people that live in West Virginia that have like done work on their house, took a load of garbage to Ford Mountain and fully expected to pay. But they were asked, are you working for somebody in Pike County? And if they said, yeah, I'm working for somebody down here in Big <coughs> Creek, they weren't charged to dump. And I'd say, I have no way of proving it. I just know the boy told me he did it himself because he was kind of shocked about that. And then the other thing, uh, you was talking about a prior administration for giving a $6,000 and some dollar bill that's our tax money, and I don't think anybody has a right to bargain away our tax money. That's all I got to say, man. I agree with you. And last week we had a gentleman call, and the commissioner would would, would back me up on this. And he said um, he he basically got on the commissioner solid waste because he wouldn't bring him a free dumpster, and a prior magistrate 
former magistrate had promised him one. He called me after the commissioner asked me about it, and I said, no free dumpsters. And he said, well, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, as a judge executive, I have no right to give county goods or services away. It would be no different than if I said, go up to the bulk plant at the road lot and fill your truck up. I know you're having a hard time. That would be illegal. To give away uh, money that's a debt that's owed to the taxpayers, that's a debt owed to the county treasury, no one has an, has an ability to forgive that except the fiscal court as a whole on motion and order. So it's not fair for some people to pay, Mike, and others not. We're going to try to collect the, the past due uh, bills. We're, the deputy judge executive worked all afternoon with uh, Stephanie Clevenger, uh, who's the office of manager, Chuck Morley, and, uh, and Commissioner Mullins. We're doing everything we can to try to change the way we track the delinquent bills, at the, the past due amounts. But, you know, if you think about this, people who aren't paying their garbage bill and put that out, that's theft of services. They're using the county solid waste system and not paying for it, just the same as if they went to a grocery store and carried out uh, a, a gallon of milk and not paying for it. It's no different. The rest of us are having to pay for that, and we're going to try to stop it. We're limited by the manpower we have. I mean, it's, this is a big difference coming back from Frankfurt when there's massive amounts of staff. You know, there's not a lot of staff, and we're all chipping in trying to do this. Uh, and we're going to try to clean it out. It's not going to be done the same way. We're going to be, this will be the most transparent and honest county government that's ever been in Pike County, Kentucky. And that's why we're here tonight. I wish we didn't have to make some of these decisions. Uh, there's been some sleepless nights. I know Commissioner Tackett told me late awake at 4 o'clock in the morning thinking about how this is going to affect some folks. Um, we've had to make decisions on some of the temporary layoffs, the, the part-time as employees. Commissioner Tackett had to lay off one of his family members. I've had to lay off a former client, friend, you know, close family friend. Those are the decisions we're having to make, and they're not easy. But we can't keep doing business the way it's been done for the last 20 or 30 years. Or let me point this out, and I don't know if anybody else is going to speak. Last night, I got a text from a friend of mine who's a former state representative that the Knott County Fiscal Court voted for a partial government shutdown. Cutting the senior citizen centers, Eugene. Uh, only emergency road work. County workers losing their health insurance. And last, the week before that, John Kirk, who is uh, uh, the sheriff in, in uh, Martin County, friend of mine, done his best to crack down the drug epidemic over there, is on TV asking for donations to keep the sheriff's office open. We have weathered the storm better because we're a bigger county. We've got resources uh, that other counties don't have, but we also have bigger obligations. Uh, no other county in this region has to worry about running and closing a landfill. That's a huge financial obligation. So we're going to do it right. Uh, if there's any other, no other questions, we'll move on to the next item of business and try to wind this up. All right, uh, moving on, do we have any business for the treasurer? No uh, See, no business from the treasurer. We have reports of the Pike County Department Supervisors. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Williamson. Anything, sir? Uh, Commissioner Mullins? No. And we have Commissioner uh, Little over here. Anything on the road department? Um, any other county employees have anything? Mr. Kaiser, Mr. Hanson. Next item of business is the uh, county assistant county attorney's comments, and then the deputy county judge executive comments. Not tonight. I've spoken enough tonight, and I'm just going to wrap this up by two or three things. I want to first of all thank all of you for coming out tonight. This is a great crowd, and it shows me that people do care about the future of this county. I want to thank all the members of the media for being here to bring attention to this issue. And I especially want to thank the members of the Belfry Fire Department. I see uh, Mr. Nee Jackson in the back, several members of the fire department. The Belfry Fire Department does a great job, and we certainly appreciate them making the building available. Uh, we hope that they'll, they'll have us back over here in a few months for another meeting. 
Uh, again, thank you all for coming out tonight. And I would like to ask, um, see who we can get to do this. Ernie, would you like to come and say the benediction for us? things, Lord, that you've provided for us in our lifetime. You told us that you would always provide our needs and not our wants. And you've always done that as far as I know for me and my family. And I don't know of anyone in this area or even in the state, Lord, that has starved to death in my lifetime and I've been here a lot of years. So what you say is the truth. That you, one thing you can't do and we know that is life. Lord, the meeting was called here by the physical court to explain to the community and the people in the county the condition of the county's finances and a report on the landfill and what must take place to that the landfill and the garbage pickup may survive. I know that you knew that before I ever mentioned it. But Lord, we need help. And I pray, Lord, that you'd send your blessings down on her physical court and I pray, Lord, that they would look to you for guidance in each and every decision that they make. And if you're involved, I know that those decisions is going to be right. Lord, we have so many things to give you thanks for, and a lot of times we fail to do it. But, Lord, we know that each and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, I could go on and on giving you the praise and the glory that you deserve. But the time of the meeting has came that we ask that you bless us and dismiss us from this meeting. Thank you, Lord, and amen. 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 <coughs> Last item on the agenda. Sorry. <coughs> Last item on the agenda is there a motion for adjournment? Motion. We have a motion to adjourn with Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Robertson. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Hackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Johnson? Yes.